Today's video is going to be all about my plant supply closet. I wanna take you guys on a tour of that and also show you some of my favorite plant supplies that I've collected over the years. Let's get into it. Okay, so this is the closet. It's a standard closet. <laughs> so I'm just going to go ahead and show you. And we'll start with the very top. So at the top is sort of a miscellaneous mix and array of cleaning products, stuff for my bunny and stuff for my plants. Um, this top row in here and here and, and there are all bunny supplies for my pet bunny. And then at the very bottom, we have the rest of all of my plant supplies. Now my closet isn't exactly the most aesthetically pleasing, but it definitely has a function and a purpose and I can definitely find everything that I need. Um, so that's all that matters to me. I don't really care too much about aesthetics and whatnot and then i forgot to mention over here i just have some more cleaning supplies like broom and two mops so here is where i keep the majority of my pots when i'm not using them i also have more down here and then i have some like moss in the back there and a humidifier more pots i also have a one of these things that i will talk about a little bit later it's like um a half gallon sprayer um that i can talk more about in a minute and then i have more pots down here and then in here i have um some more maintenance items like fertilizers and stuff and then i have this like miscellaneous array of items that i'm going to be talking about in depth in just a moment so yeah that is a high level overview of my plant supply slash bunny supply slash cleaning supply and overall utility supply closet. First up on the list of some of my favorite house plant supplies that I own, it's gotta be mosquito bits. I have a whole video about how to use this if you're interested. In that video, I talk all about how to use mosquito bits and the benefits. Go ahead and watch that video if you're interested. This is definitely something that I recommend everyone own, especially if you're someone like me who wants to get ahead of the pest situation and not really deal with it as a defense but more of an offense it's good stuff the next thing i own that i really love is hydrogen peroxide again i talk about this in another video but this just really helps with treating plants for pest issues and also helping to prevent them as well so highly recommend this if you also are having pest issues or of course if you just want to get ahead of it I also want to talk about these spray bottles. So these spray bottles are actually really, really handy, especially for propagations. Um, mainly I use these for my moss propagations, but I also have perlite propagations and water props. And these are really helpful for those as well. So, so um, this one is just straight up H2O, it's water. But this one is hydrogen peroxide and I labeled it. Um, it's a mix of hydrogen peroxide and water. I have to keep this in my closet because with hydrogen peroxide, you're supposed to keep it in a dark container like this because the sunlight should not penetrate it. It's not good for the uh, concentration of the mix. So I keep this in my closet. If you're wondering why I would put hydrogen peroxide in a clear container, it's because it's in the darkness in my closet. But yes, these are very helpful. I got these from Amazon and I can link below if you're interested, but they're really helpful and I think they're also really cheap also. This fertilizer is called the Espoma Organic Fertilizer. I no longer use this on my houseplants because it is January. I live in the upper northeast of the United States, so it's very cold and it's very much winter and my plants aren't really growing as much as they used to, so I stopped using this. But in the spring and summer, I will return to using this. And it's really helpful because it has like a pre-measured cup at the top here that you just kind of shake it up and pour it into the chamber. And so it's, it's just got a really cool design. Um, and I highly recommend it because it also is super helpful. It works like a charm. The only downside of this is that it smells awful, terrible. I got it all over my closet one time and it was just, it wasn't fun, it, it was not fun. Moisture meter. So this is what it looks like. You probably heard a lot about the moisture meters if you guys are not new to the plant community, but this basically I use for some of my larger plants that have very deep 
um, pockets of soil. It helps me to just see how much water the plant needs or um, if it's not in need of water at all. This one also helps to, um, it tests the moisture, but it also has a light and a pH option as well. So you just toggle this back and forth. I think it's stuck, but yeah, it's really stuck. Yeah, yeah but it, you just toggle it back and forth and, and then this little meter over here will help determine, I can't really see that, but. But this meter will help determine the amount of light and the amount of water and also pH levels, whatever plant that you are inquiring about. So yeah, you just go ahead and stick these two prongs uh, about a few inches into the soil and it will tell you the three measurements um, when you need it to. This is really helpful and I try to use this as much as possible, but oftentimes I end up just using my fingers because I honestly think that even though this is really helpful, in my opinion, the most accurate reading you can get is by using your natural senses, such as your eyes and your touch. So the next supply I wanna talk about are these clear pots. So these are a pair of clear net pots that I actually use for some of my more finicky, root rot prone cuttings and plants. Um, and so these are really cool because you can see, obviously they're clear so you can see the roots. So there's also some holes along the sides here, as you can see. So again, with those plants that have root rot issues, these holes, uh, in addition to these holes, obviously at the bottom here, are really helpful to help increase the oxygen and airflow um, to the roots. So that's why these pots are really important. These are also known as orchid pots. A lot of the time people use these to pot up their orchids, which orchids, as you know, have very finicky roots as well and need a lot of air flow and drainage. So these are also used for orchids, but um, I call these my clear net pots. So I don't have like a specific name for them and I definitely don't use them for orchids because I don't own any at the moment, hopefully in the future. So yes, these have been such a life saver, um, helping me to keep an eye on those finicky plants that love to rot on you. <laughs> I will link these below as well because I know that these are heavily asked about. So I will do that. The very last thing I want to talk about is a spray bottle. I have a spray bottle that I use to spray all of my plants down with um, preventative insecticidal soap. I also have a pressure sprayer. This is my half gallon pressure sprayer. What you do is you, oh, what you do is you unscrew the top like such, pour in your water in the top there, close it back up. Screw it on really tight, nice and easy there. And then you have to build the pressure back up because you just released all of it by opening it. So you go ahead and lift this lever and you just sort of keep pumping until you feel like you can't pump anymore. And then you go ahead and you spray using this yellow lever. It's really cool. I use this mostly to mist some of my plants that are high humidity, loving plants. But I also use this to water some of my uh, smaller plants as well. Sometimes, not often. But yeah, those are all of my supplies. All right, and that is all for today's video. Thank you guys so, so much for tuning in. I hope you guys enjoyed the video today. If you did, feel free to like and subscribe for more content. Thanks so much, and I'll see you later. Bye.